What's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project. Today is going to be a special video. Why? Well, I'm in Lewis's garage down here in the sunshine state of Florida. Even though we're in Florida, seems to be a little bit of a cold front here. So I actually got my hoodie on, which is a good reminder and a good plug to tell you guys, I got a whole fresh shipment of swag that has come in. So if you guys need to keep warm, and I know that a lot of you guys that were down at Foxtoberfest would have wished that these guys were for sale because man, it was cold there. Anyways, I got hoodies, I got t-shirts, I got some hats in. But anyways, this isn't about merch. This is about Fox bodies and buying Fox bodies, not necessarily from the guy down the street or from your local marketplace, but maybe even further than out of state, maybe from another country. Now, my friend Lewis, if you guys would remember, there was a white coupe with 80,000 ish original kilometers that I picked up late last year. So I finished his car, I got the kit on, and well, the car's actually still in Canada. With COVID and everything else, it made things a little bit frustrating for him because me and Lewis are both very familiar and used to taking our cars, importing, exporting across the borders. So needless to say, Lewis ended up picking up the blue Georgia coupe off me because, well, it was already in the US and he didn't have to deal with any importing or travel bans or any of that other stuff. And well, we are now finally sorting out him getting the 90 white on black sent down to him here in Florida. So a lot of you guys, if you're ever wondering what that process looks like, well, it seems pretty tedious. And I'm gonna try and make it a little bit easier or more familiar, maybe answer some of the questions that you guys would have about importing a car from another country. So for you guys that might be in the US that are thinking about maybe getting a Canadian car, believe it or not, we got some clean ones up there. The smart people that bought these cars, knowing that they live in wintry slash salty conditions, some of them were smart enough to put the cars away during the winter so that they wouldn't get any corrosion or anything else. So those cars do exist. Not to mention the US dollar generally does a little bit better than the Canadian dollar. Therefore, you have a little bit more buying power when it comes to the actual purchase price. With that said, let's flip things around. A lot of us guys up in Canada want something specific that, well, maybe we can't find it in Canada either. And we wanna go south of the border, find something from you know, a Southern state, which could be sun faded, but no rust on it. Or maybe it's a specialty car that wasn't available in Canada, like the 93 Cobra, or maybe certain Celines or anything else. So you're probably wondering, well, how much of a pain in the ass is it to import my car into the US or import a car into Canada? So first thing that you're gonna do, you're gonna probably Google, you're gonna search, you know, importing my car. You're gonna see all of this stuff from uh, customs and border agencies and everything else and uh, probably see some fees that you might have to pay. And there's gonna be talks about having to retrofit and convert your bumpers and crash test ratings and daytime running lights and airbags and all of this stuff. Well, none of that stuff matters. It doesn't matter in Canada and it doesn't matter in the US for a Fox body. Why is that? Well, in the US, after a car is 25 years old, it doesn't matter anymore. The EPA, DMV, ABC, XYZ, none of those agencies care if the car is over 25 years. And for Canada, it's even better because after 15 years, they don't care what's going on. So any of the items that you might be concerned about when you read, oh, do I need to change my speedometer? Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? You don't need to do any of it. So that's one thing you guys don't need to worry about. The next thing that you're gonna notice is you probably see some companies and there's some really good ones out there. And you know, even I've used them at times when I haven't been able to go and get a car myself personally. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in detail as well Is is it worth you yourself going to get the vehicle versus paying somebody to do it? Now you have a company, uh, let's take TFX International for example, not sponsored by them. I have used them door to door concierge service. They give you the paperwork, you fill it all out, you provide them the details, 
and they are gonna get you the car imported to your doorstep with all the paperwork that you need to go to your DMV or to your Ministry of Transportation um, if you are up in Canada and you're gonna be able to get an ownership slash title for your vehicle. So that's the one way of doing it. On average, I would tell you guys that if you needed to get a car you know, from somewhere southern U.S. up to Toronto or somewhere in the Toronto area down to southern U.S., uh, you're probably going to be somewhere between two and three thousand dollars. And you can use that term loosely because it kind of covers Canadian or American currency. So you got to factor in that cost. So you're thinking, OK, I'm going to spend three thousand dollars just to get this Fox body that I've already paid 15, 20, 30 thousand dollars for. And, you know, if you're paying $30,000 for a Fox, it's all original and you're paying that bracket value, you're probably not going to care to pay $3,000 more to get the vehicle sent to your door. If you're down in the $15,000 range, well, that could probably make or break your deal. So you're thinking about how can I save a little bit of money by handling the paperwork yourself? So I'm going to break this up into two parts. Um, let's talk about first for uh, the Canadians out there that want to maybe bring a U.S. car up. So things have changed. Um, not only, you know, with COVID shutting down the borders, now you need to worry about vaccinations and proof of this and that and uh, getting COVID tests. That aside, uh, paperwork wise, the title of the vehicle. When you make that deal, you need to get the title. So whether you're paying the seller full price up front or whatever you negotiate with them, you need the title, free and clear, no liens, none of that stuff for the vehicle. You need to have that sent to the US border in which you are going to cross 72 hours before, before you're gonna cross with the car. So if today is Monday and you're planning on crossing on Wednesday, well, that title needed to be there and time stamped yesterday. So you're already too late. So keep that in mind. Why do they need that title 72 hours before they're crossing before you're crossing? Well, that's to make sure the car's not stolen and so that they can document that the vehicle was actually exported out of the country. So what you would do, you would go down, you would get your vehicle, whether you're throwing it on a trailer, maybe you're going to drive it. We're going to talk about driving in a minute. So you go down, you pick up your car, you stop at the US side of the border. You present them with the information for your car. They're gonna go through, they're gonna find your title. They're gonna stamp the title with an export stamp. And that's gonna give you the clearance to go across to Canada. Now, with that said, you need one other thing. And this is newer. You need something that's called an ITN number, International Transaction Number. They call it like a passport for your goods that you're exporting. And money grab, I don't know. I don't know what the justification is. You're gonna have to go online and you're gonna have to find the service that's gonna provide you with this ITN number that's gonna allow you to export the vehicle. So those are the two things you need to do before you can even think about exporting the car out of the US into Canada. Once you have those things, and you cross the border on the Canadian side, you're gonna do some paperwork. And this goes through the RIV, the Registrar of Imported Vehicles of Canada. You can do all the forms online now. Before you used to wait until you get to the border, you're filling everything out with a pen. It can all be done in advance online. Um, Adobe fillable PDF, you can do it all that way. And that will allow you to present the paperwork for the car, they might come out and validate the VIN number in the door jam or in the window. They might not. I've seen it both ways. Sometimes they care more than other times. And they're gonna ask you how much you paid. Don't try and lie. Don't try and you know think you're gonna get out of paying some tax because here you're gonna be paying all of the tax right then and there. And that's gonna be the end of it. So if they think you're lying, they're going to go on marketplace. They're going to go on forums. They're going to go to wherever they may think your car was posted. eBay, bring a trailer, all of those places. If they find out that you lied, you're going to be in for a hard time. 
And similarly, that's going to go the same way with uh, if you're Canadian, um, bringing a Canadian car into the US. So don't lie about your value. Once you pay your taxes, you're not going to pay duties on a Fox body, guys. Fox bodies were made in North America. They fall under the North American Free Trade Agreement, of, uh, which is called NAFTA. Therefore, no duties. So consider yourself saving a couple bucks there. Once you got all that paperwork, no problem. Go to your Ministry of Transportation. Make sure you got your insurance, um, any inspections that you might need, safeties, any of that stuff register the car, you're on the road. So there is your US to Canada. Canada to the US. There is no export process for Canada. Canada is gonna let a vehicle go out of the country and never really even know it left. I don't know why it's like that. That's the reality you see in the movies. Cars get stolen, they end up in shipping containers and leave. Well. Kind of the idea. So I'm not sure why Canada doesn't care about their vehicles or goods leaving the country. Maybe they just don't have the time to deal with it. I don't know. Uh, with that said, you are going to need a customs broker on the U.S. side. The customs broker is going to ask you to fill out some paperwork. Uh, you're going to need um, you're going to need a couple forms filled out. I can't remember the name of the forms off the top of my head. However, I will put them down in the description or a little bit lower in the video here. All of that paperwork needs to get filled out and you can find any customs broker online. Uh, you're going to end up paying, uh, I think it's uh, two and a half percent um, of your tax. They call it a duty and of your purchase price. Again, don't lie about your purchase price. You're going to need a bill of sale, copy of the title or the ownership that Canada has. And they're going to do all that paperwork for you. Um, you could attempt to do it yourself, but you know what? They usually only charge it's under a couple hundred bucks for somebody to do it all, do it all right, everything is filed and you're good to go. Now, we talked about an ITN number. If you want to go from uh, the US into Canada, well, if you're going from Canada to the US, you're gonna need a PAPS number if you're transporting the vehicle yourself, P-A-P-S. And again, similarly, this is the permit that's allowing you to export something out of Canada into the US and falls typically underneath the National Truck Freight Association, something like that. Um, you can do it yourself. Your customs broker will be able to help you out with that one. And you're going to need all of that information filled. You'll get your paperwork stamped at the border. So you'll get all your clearance and then all that paperwork you will bring to your state and there, whether you have state inspection or any other potential steps for your state, at that point, once you've satisfied your state requirements, you'll be able to title and register your car. So there you go. That's in terms of paperwork at a very high level. It's more process than headache. It, it's not rocket science. You guys can do this. You can save some money versus paying somebody. You can make a trip out of it. So now that you've come over the hurdle of all the paperwork that's required, generally speaking, to be able to import one of these, whether it's into the US or it's into Canada, you have to ask yourself, is it worth trying to do this on your own than pay for the gas or your flight to get to where the vehicle is or driving down or up and your trailer and all of those other things versus paying, you know, maybe a couple thousand dollars um, just to get somebody to do the door-to-door -door service. Now, you could do one other thing as well. You could pay a national trucking company um, to truck a vehicle you know, within the US. So maybe they're bringing it from Texas up to Niagara Falls, or they bring it up to Detroit. And then you're just crossing the border, getting the vehicle there, doing your paperwork, and then bringing it home uh, versus paying them to do the cross-border transaction. That's kind of up to you and you'll have to weigh out that decision. Sometimes it's just better to pay somebody and not have to worry about the headaches, but maybe you want to take a trip. Maybe, uh, you know, you're in the heat of Florida in the summer. You want to go up and enjoy a nice Canadian summer, pick up a Fox body and drive it back down. Hey, that's an option. Or maybe you're a Canadian complaining about the winter. You want to make a trip down to Arizona, pick up a clean Fox body and drive it all the way back up. Mind you, you're going to want to be careful about the weather conditions as you get 
more on the north side of things because well you don't want to expose your car to salt and all those elements and everything else so those are some of the factors that you're going to have to consider now you guys might be wondering how am i going to legally drive this fox body that i have bought online this is a big gray area in most cases so for the canadians out there you're not going to be able to get a temporary permit temporary plate whatever it is without having the title or the paperwork of the car and you're not going to get the title work of the paper of the car because well you need to send it to the border so you're not going to get anything temporary your only other option would be is the state that you're buying the car from is to go to their local tax office or titling or however that state operates and asking them for a temp permit but they might actually ask you to pay the tax on the purchase price before they'll issue you that permit. So it's kind of a catch 22, kind of a black hole, kind of confusing. What I've personally done, I've lucked out in many cases. Usually the sellers of these vehicles are pretty good people. Actually, I think that'll make for a good episode talking about how good some people in the Fox community can be. Uh, but typically, they've left their plates on the vehicle for me for the trip. And some states allow it. I think California, the plates go with the vehicle, so they really don't care what happens with their plates. Uh, but that's not always the case. So in order to drive legally, technically you need some plates registered to the car. Hopefully the seller will leave them on for you. Get your own insurance. You can insure the vehicle as long as the insurance company call them up, say, hey, listen, I bought a car they're going to give you coverage, most likely up to two weeks, giving you time to get your paperwork done, acquire the vehicle, all those things. So as long as you got the insurance coverage, the registration is kind of, well, if you get pulled over and they give you a hard time and you explain yourself, it's a little bit of a gamble, but I can tell you out of all the cars that I've always done, I've never ever had an issue. Sometimes you might choose to bring your own plate with you off another vehicle. Sometimes they tell you you're better off having no plate at all and um, just kind of being in tow. Obviously, if you are actually towing the vehicle, then you're really gonna have nothing to worry about. So there you have it, guys. I hope that this video has helped you in some way, shape or form. Uh, there's a lot of details. There's a lot of nitty gritty things. Uh, once you do it once and you got the process nailed down, um, because it is a little bit of a learning experience. Things are changing. The process has changed a lot since I started importing cars 20 odd some years ago. But a lot of those processes have been for the better, like doing that RIV paperwork for Canada, being able to do it before you even cross and have a PDF instead of sitting there at the border filling stuff out with a pen. Um, you know, that's better, that's more efficient. Now these ITN numbers and everything else that I, I I, I don't have anything good to say, so I'm not going to say anything at all. Um, but again, hopefully this video has helped you guys in terms of being able to consider a vehicle that's not from your country and because they're getting harder to find. Although we all want to wish that we hear that story, oh, I found it from the old guy down the street or the guy around the block or, you know, grandpa had the car and it got passed down. Those are all great stories. They all do still happen. Just... They don't happen enough for the demand that is out there for these cars and people are now willing to travel and do more than travel to get their hands on some of these cars. In fact, this lightning that's sitting here behind me, this came all the way from the Middle East to Lewis. And that's where I found this truck. Obviously it was originally from the US. It uh, was bought brand new in Washington from a gentleman in the Middle East. He had it fully built. All the work was done in the US and then he had it imported over right back in 2004 and i think i have a story about this truck on my website buried somewhere i can put the link down if you guys are interested but long story short clean truck no rust low miles found hiding over there and uh we brought it back to the us and here the truck is now right so when you're really looking for something you really want something you really got to consider all options and that's sort of what the internet has allowed us to do now is to help us find the impossible at times. So with that said, I'm going to stop this video and hope that you guys can digest all of that information that I've shared and hopefully you found it useful 
Uh, if you have, please comment below if I've missed something, by all means. Um, I don't script my videos. I just kind of like think a couple ideas over and the rest is just freestyle. So I, if I've missed something or you've experienced something different than what I have outlined, by all means, comment down below and help out your fellow Foxbody enthusiasts with any more information or experiences with your importation process. And from there, hopefully we're helping somebody else be able to find the Fox body of their dreams.